Hello, hello. Welcome uh, to this uh, week uh, e-chat that will be on endotracheal intubation and a new trial which has not been uh, published yet. It will appear in the JAMA uh, soon. So Fabio Taccone and I are very pleased to welcome the two principal investigators, uh, Sheila Miata, who is a very dynamic uh, intensivist and professor of intensive care in uh, Mumbai, India. And we also have the first investigator, Vincenzo Russotto, who is intensivist in Monza in Italy, who led the, uh, the study. Uh, the, the trial is called the INTUBE um, trial, and it was an observational study, but very interesting uh, and conducted uh, in many countries in the world. So, Vincenzo, why don't you tell us yourself what you did? Thank you. And uh, thanks for this opportunity to, to introduce this trial. The, well, this is a, um, uh, a big observational study that um, involved more than almost 200 centers around the globe. Um, we wanted to just take an up, a snapshot of what happens in, uh, around the globe on a real life. Uh, so the primary aim of this study was just to um, to see what happens after uh, hardware management in critical care patients, um, which are the complications more commonly observed after intubation. Yep. And, sec and secondly, to, to see uh, the real practice of, uh, of intubation outside the randomized trial that investigated uh, the best pre-oxygenation methods and so on. Uh, we want to see what happens in real life. And uh, So about 3,000 patients? Yes, we have uh, 2,090, uh, yeah, around, okay. <laughs> around 2,000 patients and um, yeah. What the, did you find? What yeah. are the main findings? Yeah, the, the primary outcome of the study was um, a, a composite outcome, uh, which included the cardiovascular instability following intubation and then cardiac arrest following intubation and severe hypoxemia. And, um, the, and most, the main results, what did you find? Yes, that 45% um, of uh, these intubation were complicated uh, or at least were associated with uh, a peri-intubation event. Uh, one of these, at least one of these uh, previously uh, described events. And uh, But the most uh, important finding is that uh, the leading complication was cardiovascular collapse. Uh, In 43%. Yeah, approximately 43%. Wow. Um, so this is probably the, 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 the major findings because uh, probably to date, uh, most trial focused on uh, other complications and uh, probably we should uh, uh, reassess our uh, agenda on, uh, on, uh, on a hemodynamic profile. Yeah, and then it was respiratory complications, I suppose? Yes, we have... Uh, um, then we have uh, uh, approximately 10% of severe hypoxemia and approximately 3% of cardiac arrest following intubation. Okay. And uh, it, it seems that a number of complications had long-term consequences yes. days after intubation. I think it's an important finding, isn't it? Yes, because uh, we... Um, we adjusted for uh, underlying severity and uh, we noticed that uh, high CU mortality was uh, higher in patients suffering from at least one of these major events. Why? Uh, um, we How don't come? know. Because uh, probably, uh, yes, the, the, we, we can say that these complications are meaningful and uh, uh, we should further investigate uh, which ones of these complications have a, a major rule on, uh, on these outcomes. Isn't it that the patients who developed these complications were sicker than the others and more likely to die? Probably yes, although uh, we perform a sort of adjustment for uh, underlying severity and uh, uh, also after adjustment, uh, this ah, yeah. of, uh, of, uh, underlying, of uh, um, increased mortality uh, persisted after, after uh, correction for, for, uh, for severity. So, yeah, Fabio, Shailen? 
Yeah, Shell, I have a question for you because, as you said, we tried to, to make a snapshot, but people would be interested, of course, to know which are the patients at a higher risk to make this complication because, of course, you want to prevent this complication to happen. So this is the reason that we took only the critically ill patients. In hospital patients, we looked at patients in the ED, ICU, even in the operating room, but they had to be critically ill. So we didn't take the routine general anesthetic elective intubations for this uh, purpose. And um, what we try to look at is because people club intubations together, uh, those in the anesthesia, uh, in the operating room and in the ICU, but the patients in ICU, you're not only worried about the anatomically difficult airway, but you're also worried about the physiologically difficult airway, which makes the chance of complications much higher. So these were patients with, which started with uh, hypoxemia, hypotension, metabolic acidosis, right ventricular failure, which further increases the, the uh, physiology uh, or rather the pathology further increases the chance of uh, complications. So this study perhaps highlights that like Vincenzo has rightly said, all along when we do tracheal intubation, we're always worried about hypoxemia and looking at measures to reduce hypoxemia. And our focus has always been to improve peri-intubation oxygenation strategies. But in this high risk of patients, the incidence of hypotension is actually very high. And perhaps today, we need to look at measures uh, to mitigate this. And what is interesting, if I may, uh, to avoid hypotension following intubation, all along we've been given, we've been giving fluid bolus. There's the intubation bundle from Professor Samir Jaber that talks about preloading with 500 ml of saline. And recently, Jan Zatol from the Vanderbilt uh, University did a multicentric style study and has actually showed no benefit with fluid loading. And the incidence of hypotension is high. So perhaps there is a role for the earlier administration electively of vasopressors. And this is what- Well, we maybe, maybe not. We are, when you say electively, you mean without good indications because uh, uh, indeed some people recommend or consider to put all these patients on norepinephrine before right. intubating the trachea. Right, exactly, Professor uh, Jean-Louis. But this has never been studied. Now we are doing a randomized controlled trial comparing with preloading with uh, fluid versus uh, uh, electric, I mean, using uh, vasopressors because this is really the next question that needs to be answered. How do we mitigate this hypotension? Because it is real. Thank Vincenzo, uh, there were 26% of endotracheal intubations under capnography. I was a bit surprised. That's quite a high proportion, isn't it? No? Yeah, this is also another important finding because the, the secondary IM of the study was to, to see what happens in real life. And uh, this is also another important findings because uh, um, af after 10 year, more than 10 years of the national audit product project in uh, UK that uh, reported that uh, the use of capnography was, uh, the under use of capnography was associated with the uh, adverse events. Uh, we have, uh, uh, yes, the, the leading uh, method to uh, assess, to confirm the intubation today is auscultation of chest uh, after intubation. This is a really surprising uh, for sure, we, we, we are not able to make conclusions on uh, uh, patients related outcomes from this information. But no, no, sure, sure. Uh, and also 17% video laryngoscopies. Huh? Yeah. This the is number is increasing. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this has the number of uh, the first method used. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, in, in 17 patients, video laryngoscopy was the elective, let's say, method of, uh, of laryngoscopy. And uh, in um, more, most patients, uh, there was uh, already an anatomical difficulty uh, before, uh, before a laryngoscopy. So yeah, this is a uh, uh, last question. Yeah, can you, can you tell us, for example, something about uh, the number of attempts? How many patients failed the first attempt and uh, how this could uh, potentially increase the uh, risk of yeah. rat thereafter? Yes, we have uh, an in, in another finding is that uh, first attempt success is associated with the reduced risk of complications. And we have uh, an increased number of events uh, with following attempts, so especially of uh, hypoxia and uh, cardiac arrest. Uh, so this is a, already uh, this is a already known in li from literature, but we also confirmed this finding that uh, we have probably focused on hemodynamics, but 
uh, it is still true that the skills of the operator are uh, also important because um, yep. you have to, to, to think both on uh, hemodynamics, physiology, but also be prepared to uh, to 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 just uh, one attempt, and uh, the first attempt should be successful in order to make a safe intubation. Fantastic. Uh, Vincenzo, Sheila, thank you so much. This is really very interesting and we are looking forward to seeing the paper published in the JAMA. We know it was presented at the SCCM meeting recently and we will hopefully see it soon on, on paper or on the screen. So thank you very much and take care. Bye-bye.